Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. One of the most common misconceptions about Iowa-class battleships, one of the things that no matter how many videos we make about it just doesn't seem to get through, is that uh, these ships can still sail around. Uh, they can be made to sail around, but since they were decommissioned, they have not been. And people always are like, well, this ship used to be in the mothball fleet in Bremerton, right? Correct. In 1999, it came here to Philadelphia, right? Correct. Well, then how to get here without uh, sailing? So you guys probably already know the answer to this, but if your ship isn't using its own engines, it needs to move from one place to another, you get a tugboat to do it. So, uh, we, we've already done a ton of videos talking about why we can't reactivate our propulsion plant. Uh, costs aside, our Navy agreement says we can't. The uh, sea chests in the bottom of the ship where we would be inducting all the water we need to do this process are uh, blanked over so we can't get any water through there. And of course, it's not just as simple as getting a boiler going again. You need the boiler and the engines, the turbo generators, the evaporators to make feed water, fuel pumps, all of these things that have not been used since the late 80s, early 90s. The last time the ship sailed under her own power would have been in late 1990 when she goes into the shipyard for her last dry dock period. At that point, knowing that the ship is going to be decommissioned, they shut down the plant and start blanking things over for preparation for the mothball fleet. That said, the ship has moved since then. So after about uh, eight years in the mothball fleet in Bremerton, Washington, it is decided that this ship will be used as a museum ship in the state of New Jersey. At this point in 1999, they still don't know where in the state the ship is going to go, but she has been selected to be converted into a museum ship on the East Coast in the territorial waters of New Jersey. And the Panama Canal is about to be turned over to the Panamanian government. So the decision was made to move the ship as quickly as possible prior to that turnover happening. And moving New Jersey through the Panama Canal was the most expensive transit of a single ship through the canal ever because it was a dead ship tow. The ship had no power. If anything went wrong, she was just going to drift and that would do a tremendous amount of damage. Of course, this is a serious problem because the ship is 108 feet and some change wide. Iowa class battleships are 108 foot, three inches by design. Um, we have some documentation that says, you know, maybe we weren't that wide. It's more like 108 foot, one and a half inches for New Jersey for whatever reason. Uh, so the Panama Canal is only 110 foot wide, which means there is less than a foot of clearance on each side. If the ship drifts a foot, she slams into the lock of the Panama Canal. Yeah, so check out this picture of the crew as the ship goes through the Panama Canal, where they can just reach out and touch the side of the canal as they're going through. There is fractional space. Of course, if the Panamanian government got this new national asset and then we asked them to move this ship through, they would have probably said no. It would have been crazy for them to say yes. So New Jersey is towed via tugboat all the way from Bremerton, Washington to the Panama Canal, through the canal, and then back up here to Philadelphia. Meanwhile, Iowa is being towed from the east coast here back around to the reserve fleet at Susan Bay. She had originally been on the east coast, and the Navy decided since the two west coast battleships were being turned into museums, they didn't want the two east coast battleships to stay on the east coast. So they took Iowa to the west coast. So um, I am sitting on the tow rope, the hawser that was run off of the bow of the ship, to the tugboat. They actually cut away the bull nose at the front of the ship to run this rope through that uh, hawse hole that's there. 
which was originally for the Paravane uh, chain, and ran it from there to the tugboat. And then afterwards, they welded the, that bullnose back on where it goes, the, the little shield at the front of the bow. This rope is about three times as thick as the normal mooring lines that we use here. Because you definitely don't want your tow line to part while you're in the open ocean, and you definitely, definitely don't want it to part while you're in the Panama Canal. So this is thicker than my leg, and I run marathons, so I've got a, a pretty sizable thigh here. And, and this thing is thicker than that. So, um, good sized piece of line here. So we, we've long talked about taking the ship to dry dock. If we did that, we would probably get four tugboats minimum to move us. At least two of the tugboats would tie on on the hip, either side of the ship, or excuse me, on the same side of the ship, one forward and one aft, to uh, give us the propulsive power to move. The other two tugboats would be there in case that one needs to trade out and to come in and bump the side of the ship to help us on turns. So if we are trying to pull the ship away from the pier, we'd probably get one come around the side and push us from the other side or come on the outboard side and pull us around to get us to curve out into the channel. And then that leads to the question of, this is a 57,000 ton ship when fully loaded. She's probably north of 45,000 tons right now, dead empty. How does this little tugboat do that? Well, it's real easy to move a ship through water. It doesn't take all that much power to move a floating object through water. You've had toys in the bathtub and you touch them and they go from one end of the tub to the other. Um, when I worked in Baltimore on the various ships there, I worked with them doing line handling and whatnot with practically every ship that went into dry dock uh, in that collection. And by hand alone, I could pull a rope that would pull Constellation, which is uh, designed to be about 1,200 tons. I have uh, put my foot on the side of the lightship Chesapeake, which is, if I remember correctly, about 600 tons, and pushed her away from the pier with one leg. I, it's pretty easy to move a ship in water, so you don't need a ship the size of a battleship to tow a battleship. Probably the most famous tugboat incident with Battleship New Jersey was the day she was launched, December 7th, 1942. She was the largest ship to be launched stern first in the Western Hemisphere up until that point. Uh, so they weren't entirely sure how that was going to work. She was very heavy, so they greased the slipways pretty heavily. Well, it turns out that the ship really wanted to get in the water, so she built up a tremendous amount of momentum going down the slipways, and when she hit the water, remember it doesn't take much to move a ship in water, she just kept right on going. So practically every tugboat, and that's part of the Delaware, was trying to grab onto her. She ended up running stern first up onto the state of New Jersey, which is on the other side of Delaware River from the Philadelphia Navy Yard where she was built. So um, some people say that uh, the ship was giving her home state a kiss. So then every tugboat in the area grabs her to pull her back off of the land and move her into dry dock number three. And that dry dock number three where she was completed and where she was reactivated for the Vietnam War is the same place we're looking to dry dock the ship when we can raise the money to do so. So were you here 20 years ago when the ship got towed up to Delaware? Did you get to watch her then? Would you come out and watch the ship when we tow her to dry dock in the next couple of years? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. The support you guys have given us allows us to consider taking the ship into dry dock, which is a tens of millions of dollar project. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description if you'd like to donate to support the museum 
And you can also help us out by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the channel. Thanks for watching.